participants for this webinar today. Uh, this uh, webinar is first webinar, webinar est d'abord et le premier webinar de la coalition mondiale des forêts sur le tourisme et je voudrais give a floor to our moderator we will moderate uh, today uh, and uh, then uh, Uh, in the end, uh, I will give conclusions. Thank you. Kaisha. Thank you, Andre, and uh, thank you for a great opportunity to be moderator today. And I will work with you all day. And please give me this opportunity to be a strong moderator because we have seven brilliant speakers and we need to keep time. And uh, of course, it's limited seven minutes for each speaker. And let me give, uh, I will stay with you, and when you will uh, have leave one minute for you, I will just give just finish for one minute, two minutes, one minute and stop, okay? okay. Just keep this one. Another one uh, which I um, like to say you, for all participants, please, um, I think everyone now very well know how work in Zoom. It's important to life is getting more virtual. Um, uh, the communications, but anyway, just a, please, all this meeting, uh, before we start our general discussion, question and answer sessions, please keep your mic muted for participants, not for speaker. And also, you camera also should be off, okay? You know how to do that? You see on the bottom panel, and you can see Mike, and you can see uh, Margaret's uh, video. And please, for all participants, I see now, for everyone, it's real to switch it off no, the camera and uh, muted microphone. When, when, we, when we start a question and answer session, I will give you floor, and you can just uh, start a talk and, uh, and uh, switch your Uh, and started to speak by your microphone. And also, you see in the bottom also, Mark is called chat. And if you have some question or comments during this uh, meeting, please also use this chat for you. Um, you can just write this and I will follow you and see what the questions or comments you have. So, and uh, please, because time is live and we need to start our webinar and We are so happy to start our discussions. And first, for introduction, I give floor for Kimanta. Kimanta with her gen from Sri Lanka. Kimanta, please, can you introduce yourself just very shortly and start your presentation? And I will keep our time as a time keeper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kaisa. Um, thank you for everybody joining this uh, webinar. Um, I want to share my uh, screen. Is it? Can everyone see? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This. Uh, I mean, everybody understand what is tourism. Uh, so when it comes to tourism, why it is important for us is because there are so much of. Uh, impacts happening uh, in, in different places um, and also there are a uh, lot of benefits to the people because of tourism and the tourism is just not just one industry it includes the lodging transport uh, maintaining all these attractions um, and there are so many travel companies and, the companies and it's a very very wide area globally in 2019 Um, approximately um, around uh, um, the more than two trillion um, has already uh, uh, is, is worth um, uh, in, in US dollars. Um, United States alone, uh, so they have spent uh, uh, billions, uh, or more than 500 billion in their uh, uh, in in their um, uh, tourism industry. If you see this one clearly, you see there are certain regions have 
a huge amount of tourism uh, business or the performance. And here you see who, uh, more than 1 trillion. And again, North uh, East Asia, it's more than 2 trillion. European region, more than 2 trillion. So it's a, it's a huge business uh, all over the world before COVID. But when, it, when the COVID happens, um, immediately the tourism got affected. And according to this is the UN uh, World Trade, uh, World Tourism Organization report, very recently issued this, this report. And it shows that um, 100 to 120 million jobs and gain uh, lost is around 910 billion to about 1.2 trillion um, US dollars. Uh, the loss again on the GDP 1.5 to 2.8 percent uh, GDP loss. Um, so this slide shows that um, there's a international travel physics and this uh, last few months about. 320 billion loss in the in the tourism sector. So I'll share this presentation with you so you can get other figures. Um, I just downloaded this document yesterday. Um, so when it comes to tourism, um, there are good tourism, there are bad tourism, but in the in the conventional type of tourism, there are environmental and socio-cultural problems, and there are sometimes cultural clashes, there are fights. Um, and also a uh, lot of lot of authenticity about losing the communities and some countries don't allow uh, much tourism like Bhutan don't allow much tourism um, the commercialization everything become money um, so that's a big issue then the environmental destructions are, are very much connected with tourism uh, especially uh, the large-scale tourism facilities destroy nature cultural uh, resources um, and also fragmentations, um, and, and, and there are many other social problems. Um, the aviation related to tourism is a, is a huge uh, number, at least about 915 million tons of carbon dioxide has emitted in 2019. Then uh, the crime rate has increased in, in, in some of the tourist, tourist areas, uh, the urbanization, um, is, is, is a major major issue as well. Um, our concern as the Global Forest Coalition, we are interested about how the tourism is affecting the forest. Now, there are a lot of literature about how the, how the tourism is, uh, especially tourism infrastructure, destroying um, the natural resources, especially the forest areas for uh, special infrastructure uh, construction like the, uh, the roads, hotels, airports, tourism facilities, resorts, and all sort of tourism uh, infrastructure um, destroy forest areas. And this is something very interesting. And, and we normally see, see that ecotourism is, 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 a, is a good way um, to, to, uh, to manage tourism uh, rather um, I mean, than, the, than the conventional tourism. But this particular report about India, Nepal, Bhutan, and China this relates to the forest loss in the, related to the ecotourism. You can see that India is, is a better situation, but in Nepal, uh, the Bhutan, uh, we see Bhutan has uh, less tourists, but is still the forest loss related to the uh, ecotourism is, is high compared to India. And China is the highest. So I think we have to uh, have a good, big concern about why this is happening even uh, with the ecotourism. Again, the tourism and women, uh, the women uh, get involved in, in very much in the tourism sector. Um, you can see in, in different sectors uh, how women's involvement, uh, but, but at the same time, the women have uh, low, low quality jobs, so there may be low wages jobs or precarious jobs, and their wages are very low sometimes, and, 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 and they are subject to the sexual harassment and sexual exploitation as well. So I think this is something uh, for us to, to um, understand that tourism has a positive as well as negative impact on, on women. Uh, I, so in, in our recent uh, uh, report, we, we try to 
uh, analyze the social and environmental impacts related to the, I mean, the negative impacts related to the tourism. And we see there are a lot of community displacement, impacts on the indigenous and local communities, uh, the child labor, uh, increasing crime, sexual exploitation, um, the, the community, loss of community freedom. And there are many social impacts. Um, at the same time, there are many environmental impacts as well, um, in, uh, including the loss of biodiversity, loss of territories, health impacts, all of them are connected with the tourism uh, negative impacts. Now, so we, we need to think about the alternatives in the, in the tourism sector. And we think that there should be some sort of a sustainable tourism or good ecotourism. Now, when it comes to the sustainable tourism, sustainable tourism um, is some, something called responsible tourism. And uh, while you are enjoying the nature, the historical locations, cultures, um, and, and enjoying the tourism infrastructure, the, the damage uh, and, and your behavior should not make much damage to the environment, society, um, and it should improve the economy, especially improve the economy of the local communities. So uh, I'll, um, I'll stop here. I think, uh, so this is the basic, uh, the main, the, 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 the entry point or the, or the initial introduction um, for, for um, the next, next few uh, speeches uh, today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Humanta, for your introduction. And we'll give floor now for Anatoly Lebedev from Russia. Uh, we know Anatoly as a founder and permanent chairman of Russia Far East Places NGO Bureau for <laughs> Regional Outreach Campaign Bro. And um, Anatoly, you ready? So good. Please, floor for you. Спасибо, Кайша. Я в русском, в русском yes. регистре работаю, окей? Okay? Yes. Я должен начать, наверное, с, с того, что для России гигантской территории, ее вообще туризм, это очень серьезная отрасль экономики. Особенно в условиях карантина, когда въездной и выездной туризм у нас пребывает в застое, Россия активно включилась в развитие внутреннего туризма, то есть между регионами. Это в целом фактор позитивный, потому что он позволяет смягчить для экономики страны и для региона. A program on the development of protected areas, which highlight the ecological tourism relevant to uh, also protection uh, and conservation of biodiversity within protected areas. Uh, there is also a program uh, to support uh, indigenous people in Arctic. which uh, allowed to be uh, engaged of the Arctic people in the development of uh, tourism initiative. And this direction of the ecotourism uh, is marked as the direction which should be supported by the state. Очень... Я не быстро говорю, нормально? Uh, нормально. Есть очень много негативных сторон. At the same time, there are many uh, negative uh, problems, negative issues, 
which impact development of the ecotourism because uh, some touristic company losing their benefits they started to pay attention industrial tourism commercial tourism and this worry us because it can uh, it, it can uh, impact especially people in Siberia and the Russian Far East on uh, Baikal Lake, for example, and in Kamchatka, that uh, the uh, tourism uh, can be too commercialized and and it can impact the natural resources adversely because uh, they bring threats uh, to the integrity of the natural ecosystems. And ecological tourism in the uh, protected areas, uh, for example, around protected areas, uh, can spread uh, the um, uh, natural resources. And when large business coming to Baikal, for example, we have some problems relevant to regulations and uh, capacity. Uh, and we can tell that with quarantine situation, the people from China coming less and less, but at the same time, we have more flow of the tourists from Russia. And we also worry that, this, uh, that uh, the, uh, there is a lobbying of the industrial commercial tourism uh, which allow to visit uh, the most uh, fragile areas in the protected uh, in the system of protected areas and we are actively involved in these issues Uh, there is a special uh, uh, a special draft program of state support for the traditional activities of indigenous people in the Arctic. And this support of the Arctic people, the, uh, the state uh, agencies, uh, they divided uh, the indigenous the indigenous peoples of the Arctic from indigenous people of other Siberia and Far East. And the most support is provided to the people of Arctic, but not other indigenous communities living in Siberia. And of course, it's affect uh, conne uh, connection, it's affect relationship between indigenous communities in the different uh, parts of the Russia. It's what, what I would like to tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anatoly. And um, yeah, it was really good. It's only seven minutes. That was good. Thank you. Thank you for keeping your time. And uh, let's go over again for Professor Nimat Safarov from Tajikistan. Um, Professor uh, Safarov presented organization called Nosfera, and he is a founder of this organization, scientist, and he works in the Global Forest Coalition methodology, work in the local community, special work with women organizations, and supported women and gender aspects in the forest, forest issues. And um, now we give floor for mm -hmm. you, and um, Professor, we speak in Russia. Um, Mr. Safarov, floor for you, seven minutes, please. Yes, you can speak. Вы можете начинать говорить. Да? You can speak да. now. Да. Все, вас все слышат. А вы хотите презентацию включить? Да, и презентацию можно включить, потому что она далее, но если это возможно. They would like to show presentation. Uh, 
там есть кнопка, кнопка демонстрации экрана. Да, и все. Нажмите зеленую кнопочку демонстрация экрана. И все. Не проблема, давайте. Да, ну, да вот видно, видно, да, презентация? Да, вот все, все, великолепно видно, только теперь ее раскройте, все. потому что не так видно, пока нет, пока что две стороны видно. Now we have presentation from Tajikistan, which calls ecotourism as a basis of, I don't know, I don't, ecotourism as a basis for new principles for the wildlife conservation and biodiversity conservation in Tajikistan. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, information about our work in Tajikistan. We are talking about new principles of the protection of biodiversity and wildlife in Tajikistan. We love our ecosystem and wildlife in Tajikistan. We, we are saying that we have many key biodiversity areas in mountain mountains of Tajikistan. And this is a very good area for the development of ecological tourism. However, ecological tourism is very valuable for our area because we have many uh, amazing areas to visit in the mountains and in the plains. And we have many beautiful natural resources which provide opportunities for the development of ecotourism in our country. We have also the unique relict forests in the mountains, allocated by small clusters. And, and they are located within uh, marvelous uh, mountain areas. Uh, many our women uh, mostly uh, uh, working as household keepers, and they have uh, inequal uh, access to the resources. Uh, but uh, special protected areas is uh, very important for local people. And we try to engage local people in the development of ecotourism. And last two years, we uh, engaged more than 50 women in the activity relevant to ecological tourism. And these women uh, very actively work in this area and they get uh, good profit from this. Uh, our women also um, have very good knowledge of traditional uh, kitchen, traditional cooking. And uh, it's also very important in Tajik culture because it represents uh, the uh, different uh, uh, values uh, and one of the values of the uh, national tourism. Our government also have the regulation about development of the mountain areas. Uh, mountain areas in Tajikistan occupy more than 70% of the country area. And we are interested uh, to uh, develop our traditions and to, uh, to share our traditions uh, in different tourism initiatives. 
So our culture and traditions are attractive for international tourism as well. And uh, mountain tourism and uh, uh, cultural tourism are two parts and they are very attractive for tourism companies. Uh, relevant to COVID-19, uh, the uh, visiting of the natural areas decreased this year, and now we have the new form of touristic activity, activities, which uh, relevant is pilgrimage uh, to historical places, to religious places, and natural places as well, natural sacred places. Well, we have the historic natural parks, which are attractive for people from uh, cities and towns. And this, uh, this direction of ecotourism is actively developing now. Uh, now, Sphera started to develop several touristic roads in the country. For example, on this slide, you can see uh, the dinosaur tracks in the mountains, on the rocks. Uh, which are remaining and opening on the stony, uh, sandy slopes. And this, is, uh, this you can find in Karadaka area, Shurkent Natural Park. We created the new road, touristic road here, and we are uh, trying to develop tourism in this area. Uh, on this slide, you see uh, the Zigdi Valley with local uh, Erimurus Erimu flowers, which are beautiful and also very attractive, and they, uh, they, many of them are endemics of Central Asia. This area is located closely to Dushanbe and it attracts lots of local inhabitants uh, uh, because uh, it has beautiful nature and also uh, uh, medical sources of water. And this area just located in 45 kilometers from Dushanbe to Dushan. They call many people from the uh, capital coming there to look for this area. Uh, besides forests, we have, we have other mountain ecosystems. Uh, for example, here you can see uh, the brown bear, uh, Central Asian subspecies. Uh, in this area, uh, we also can find snow leopard and many other wildlife species, mostly ungulates, such as argali, uh, argali sheep. And uh, many people come in there to see this area. Uh, it's local fauna. You can see snow leopard, you can see ibex and chukar cartridge, and also Bukhara oreal. Uh, it's uh, it severs of Argali in the Baljuan Hajai Nur, which is living in the forest area. Another uh, attractive area is Kvalink Yaksu Childuhtaran. It's a huge area, more than 40 kilometer length and 70 kilometers wide, uh, close to Afghan border. Uh, tiger Gorge Nature Reserve, 
which is a plain uh, semi-desert and desert area, which provides habitats for many uh, wildlife species living in the uh, desert conditions. And this is and this is a area with hot sources of water, which has also medical value. Uh, Panch Farhor area, but uh, interesting uh, by presence of the Bukhara Burial and Chukars. Uh, this is a salt uh, hill, huge salt hill. Uh, with height of 1,300 meters above sea level. Uh, it's completely uh, uh, compiled by salt. Uh, it's a unique uh, feature in the world. And this area also valuable for wildlife conservation. Uh, many uh, plant, uh, unique plant species and uh, animals and forest, uh, uh, interesting forest habitats are preserved here. Darvas uh, Vankias Bulem, it's mountain area. Uh, it's area on the Pamir Plateau with glaciers and mountains. Uh, with several uh, roads where you can see snowy part and beauty of the mount, high mountain lakes. Murgap uh, was uh, Lake Kar Karakul with glaciers and uh, Argali ship and Waksh uh, corridor um, bordering with uh, Afghanistan area. Thank you for your attention. We love Tajikistan and thank you very much for this beautiful presentation with many slides showing uh, the yeah. uniqueness of Tajikistan uh, nature. Yeah, uh, thank you. And we leave uh, to other our um, presentation and we give floor for uh, Mr. Dil Raj Khanna, uh, Nepal. Uh, Mr. Dil worked in FICO Fund as a policy advisor in the last many years. And Mr. Dill is working in the community forest sector for the last 25 years and advocated community rights over the forest issues. And Mr. Dill also member of GFC board. Um, we have floor for you. And please, um, okay. uh, can you uh, can you uh, speech demonstration? Um, okay. Uh, mm, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> for uh, providing this opportunity to me to share uh, something <clears throat> from Nepal about the <clears throat> contribution of uh, ecotourism, particularly for the livelihood and community development uh, in Nepal. Uh, excuse me, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, basically uh, in my presentation, um, I will uh, try to highlight the uh, some of the contribution of community-based ecotourism, particularly in the context of livelihood of uh, forest dependent people, particularly poor household and, and vulnerable communities in Nepal. Uh, <coughs> Therefore, in my uh, presentation, um, basically, I will um, I'll say uh, three aspects uh, of the tourism or ecotourism in the context of Nepal. Uh, <coughs> uh, if we talk about the tourism in, in Nepal, uh, only 2.7% GDP contributes from the tourism sector in Nepal. 
uh, and uh, uh, actually we have no uh, such large amount of uh, royalty generated from the from the tourism sector only annual uh, about 2.05 million us dollar uh, generate from the tourism sector in nepal uh, and it uh, generate about 2 million employment um, uh, this is the record of uh, 2019 uh, and the major uh, tourism uh, destination particularly for the international tourist are the mountains uh, mainly for mountaineering uh, because about 16 percent land in nepal is covered by the high mountain and other destination for the tourism are protected areas and world heritage sites particularly for the trekking purpose and rivers uh, and there are very famous river for rafting uh, and and other uh, major destination for the tourism is community forestry particularly for hiking jungle safari bird watching and other different nature scenery therefore the community forestry actually is one of the important uh, sector which is uh, uh, which is uh, using or or supporting for the uh, ecotourism activities in nepal and uh, however uh, if we discuss about the revenue sharing mechanism uh, in the tourism sector the total revenues uh, out of the total revenues uh, 50% goes to the central government and 25% revenues go to the uh, provincial government and 25% and revenues goes to the local government. Actually, therefore, there is no any mechanism to share the revenue with the local communities or community forestry groups or other different community-based natural resource management group. Actually, there is no any benefit sharing mechanism with them. Therefore, uh, the local communities who are managing important community conserve area or community forest uh, they are raising their voices or concern uh, for, to develop the equitable benefit sharing mechanism particularly in the tourism sector uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, there are different impact from the tourism activities in Nepal, particularly uh, in society and in, in, in the environment. Uh, I already highlighted that there is no any uh, legal provision for the revenue sharing with affected local communities uh, generated from the tourism sector. Uh, therefore, this is really very um, uh, injustice, particularly to the local communities who are contributing for the conservation of different natural resources which is one of the basis for tourism in Nepal. And uh, there are some of the major environmental impacts from the tourism sector, particularly pollution in mountain range. There, is, uh, there are lots of events of the uh, uh, pollution in mountain range, uh, and it is really creating huge problem, particularly the mountain people, uh, the Sherpa indigenous people. And in the river and, and sacred sites, there are also lots of pollution due to the uh, international uh, tourism. Um, there is some sort of guidelines to control the pollution, but actually the tourism sector, particularly the corporate sector, they are violating that type of gu guideline to maintain the environmental sustainability in the mountain range. And uh, definitely there are some sort of impact in the biodiversity. Uh, there is huge disturbance in the habitat of wildlife. Uh, particularly in protected area due to large number of jungle safari in different uh, world heritage site uh, for example chitavan national park uh, you can see in the picture that uh, the rhino actually uh, due to disturbance in the uh, natural habitat they are visiting they are going outside uh, uh, looking for their uh, another habitat this is the situation and uh, the social impact or, col or cultural impact it already highlighted our friend from Sri Lanka. Therefore, I actually, I, I don't want to repeat all these things about the social and cultural impacts. Uh, and and there, is, uh, there are some of the impact in community forestry because many corporate uh, sector, many companies, international, even international companies, international investing, uh, financing institution, they are trying to capture the community forest area for construction of different uh, uh, large uh, hotels, resort, 
cable car and other different infrastructure, uh, particularly for the benefit of the corporate tourism activities. Uh, these are some of the important impact from the tourism sector in Nepal. However, in this situation, the community forest user groups or Kanti Kanjab group, they are trying to develop uh, their own uh, uh, ecotourism activities, uh, particularly for the livelihood, uh, of, uh, to enhance the livelihood of local communities. Uh, many uh, community conserve uh, groups, they are conserving their forest and all those forests are really very important uh, sites for the ecotourism uh, to, uh, for, uh, for example, for the bird watching or butterfly watching, uh, for that purpose, the community forest or community conserve area are utilizing and, and the community uh, conserve area or community forest groups, they are promoting very domestic type of local type of ecotourism activities. Uh, for different purposes, they are managing very small scale mini zoo, uh, and and they are also conserving wetland uh, for different uh, ecotourism activities. In that way, the local communities uh, they are actually trying to promote uh, their own type of ecotourism activities, um, and and and. Uh, however, they are also facing lots of uh, challenges from the external factor, from sometimes from government, sometimes from private, se private sector, because all those uh, private investors, they want to capture all these things which are managed by the community forest groups. Uh, in this situation, um, uh, different uh, community conserve groups or community forest groups, uh, they are managing natural forest landscape and, and uh, those type of forests are um, using for hiking uh, in some community forest area. Uh, they are also managing natural wetland and, and natural parks. Uh, for uh, local or domestic uh, ecotourism, uh, some of the community forest groups are managing mini zoo, wildlife rescue center, and community view towers. Uh, all those are utilizing for ecotourism activities. Uh, many community, the local community, they, and particularly the indigenous people, they are managing community homestay, uh, and, and uh, these are also one of the important um, uh, ecotourism activities and some of the community forest groups are managing community information center, particularly about the community uh, uh, contribution for management of the natural resources. Uh, in uh, all these type of area, uh, different uh, community-based ecotourism activities are going on. For example, natural scenery, bird watching, hiking, jungle safari, photography, all these uh, activities are happening in different forest area or community forest. Uh, some, in some forest area, uh, they are managing wetland and in uh, different activities such as uh, aquatic uh, observation, boating and fishing activities are happening and wildlife watching, uh, conservation education are also very important ecotourism activities in the context of Nepal. In community homestay, uh, the indigenous people are uh, trying to promote their traditional native food service, uh, to provide those type of food service and community culture show, and documentary, all these are activities and uh, they are trying to implement. Uh, and, and the major contribution uh, from those type of ecotourism activities uh, uh, are mainly some of the community forest groups are they are developing macro enterprise uh, and they are mobilizing some resources generated from the ecotourism activities for agroforestry activities or poor household who has very marginal land and very limited size of land and, and uh, those community groups uh, are also supporting for organic farming and, and the community group, uh, if they have found they, they, they are providing subsidy for the subsistence, uh, agriculture and, and uh, social security. Yeah. And, and in that way, actually, uh, the natural uh, tourist guide and, and uh, other different uh, peoples are engaging in those type of uh, ecotourism activities. Uh, and more than 80 mini zoo are operating in Nepal by the community forest groups and it is supporting to generate some sort of employment, particularly the poor household. Uh, in that way, uh, the ecotourism activities is being supportive for the income generation activities uh, at, at ground level, at community level. However, there are lots of challenges uh, in this sector, in particularly in the ecotourism sector, uh, because the different corporate companies and, and foreign investors, they are trying to capture the community land and they are 
trying to uh, grabbing those type of land for um, corporate type of tourism uh, activities and they are trying to violate community right and in that situation we have to create some sort of uh, committee of excuse me uh, excuse me mr deo can you just okay. getting to you know answer uh, within one minute i i will finish within one minute and there is yeah, lack of uh, support from the government agency to promote community based ecotourism through community forestry uh, there is some sort of lack of there are some sort of uh, lack of provision for sharing of the revenue generated from uh, different uh, level of government to the communities and uh, definitely there is huge impact from the covid-19 in the community based ecotourism activities because there are some sort of travel restriction restriction uh, there is a low income of the local communities due to decrease in the domestic tourism activities in the that situation definitely we have to organize different campaign at local level to protect the community right over their forest resources these are some of the way forward thank you very much thank you thank you so much for wonderful overview on tourism in nepal and uh, about uh, you know tourism um, activities in nepal and about contribution valuous contribution of community based eco tourism the livelihood of a local community it's such an interesting information and we will keep your presentation for all participants i think we will uh, thank you all of your presentation will be accessible for our participants today in the webinar so uh, let uh, give us now four for for um yeah david nandi from india is a doctorate of resource economic and has been working in land and forest use among the vulnerable tribes and forest rivers in India. And he's associated with a campaign for territorial forest and forest development in India with the All India Forum of Forest Movement. Please, for you, floor and seven minutes, no more than 10 minutes, but we will we appreciate if you will just keep your presentation. And just, uh, I just give you a mark if you can choose 10 minutes, one minute, okay? Uh, thank you. Can, can, I, can I share the screen? Yes, I have a you presentation. Can share it. Yeah, this is it. That's a demonstration. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to share my presentation and the situation of tourism in India. I would be speaking basically about uh, a particular area, the wildlife tourism in central part of India. This is the central part of India. Oh, how does it change this? Next. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, it's okay. Yeah, this is the, the Achanakma Tiger Reserve area, which is in uh, Chhattisgarh area, uh, Central India, where they have a large population of Paiga population, uh, which is a particularly vulnerable tribe, we say, uh, by the context of the uh, Constitution of India. And this is about 500. Uh, the core area is around uh, 300 square kilometer and the buffer area is 500 uh, square kilometers. So that is total around 1000 square kilometer is the uh, area of this uh, park. This is the number of tourists that they have been visiting the national park over the last four or five years before COVID uh, area. So there has been a rise in the number of tourists over the years. And very recently, there has been a steep rise in the last two, three years due to tourism, tourism being promoted by the government, tourism being promoted by the state government. So we have a... Uh, this is the total number of wildlife species that, that have been recorded in the uh, Achanak Mata Wildlife uh, Sanctuary. We have different, 33 different wildlife species and about 63 genera of uh, 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 wildlife over there. And, and this is the uh, occupation of the people over there and we uh, particularly in the core area. And uh, because of uh, very, there were a lot of difficulties uh, 
or, or, or to the local people due to eco tourism so most of them have gone for tourism and allied businesses like lodges uh, tea shops uh, handicrafts and all these things so and almost similar is the percentage of agriculture and ntfp and uh, about only 12 to 13 percent is uh, uh, either they are in services or they are doing any other job so uh, we find a large chunk of population they have been uh, diverted uh, to uh, uh, tourism industry and tourism and leaving their culture leaving there because tourism brings different kind of culture tourism brings different kind of uh, uh, livelihood to them so their original livelihood has shifted uh, totally we we did a survey of uh, this is a uh, what are the infrastructure facilities that are present over, the, over there in that in that area we have a lot of forest guest houses over there and there are some private uh, uh, rest house as well and they provide other uh, sort of facilities the transportation facilities food facilities other infrastructure facilities and all these things so so and the, the, the and the, all the lodges they have different carry, carrying capacity this was this was before covid so uh, things have changed a lot after covid situation so i will be going to that uh, this is this this we did a survey of uh, what people feel about ecotourism what people feel about uh, forest conservation and all these things both from the local population as well as from the tourists coming over there so we find that in in this whole section the ntfp collection has been totally banned uh, by the by the uh, parks uh, park administration over there so local people they have also change their food habits and they are more dependent on uh, the either the uh, income from the from tourism or market or from the government dole so so their whole eating habits and their whole uh, livelihood system and their system of uh, conservation has totally changed due to all this thing this is about the uh, eco tourism survey we did and um, trying to find out how much people are aware of the eco tourism and almost we found that similar uh, people feel that there is no advantage from eco tourism uh, more than they are being fully aware about eco tourism and they don't know about so they feel that there is less less benefit from eco tourism thing uh, or that's going on only only the, this their livelihood but the forest the uh, biodiversity and everything is be, being lost by the ecotourism this is about the awareness of the uh, conservation of the tourists who are coming over there so we found that most of them were totally aware uh, of uh, the conservation what should be the conservation and how the biodiversity should be protected we have different set of questionnaires uh, to know and from the local people also the, so this they there was a number of uh, questions put to them so we found that conservation part they at least people are quite aware of the conservation thing and all this thing uh post covid we have a lot of problems uh like uh, uh, the, the tourism has uh, almost uh, stopped uh, there is very very less tourism going on because there are a lot of lot of restrictions lot of uh, uh, norms to be followed escalating maintenance costs that, that are not giving benefit to them so we find lot of uh, uh, migration of the women, men and women, out or due to or, or that or that uh, protected areas and all this thing. Also, also in this in this uh, uh, era of COVID, in this three four months, we found that there have been lot of displacement of the people. Also, people have been displaced over there. Uh, a new new sort of adventure tourism spots being trying to develop. 
by uh, pushing uh, the people's livelihood like the rivers rivers they, they used to catch fish and all this thing are being converted into adventure adventure tourism so that's that's all sort of uh, problem whatever ntfp they have been collecting they have that is totally banned now no no they are not allowed to go into the gore area except the except the tourist business and all this thing and uh, again recently the, the 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 they have employed elephants and all this thing to displace people out of the core area to move them to the buffer area or to the different area so there are there are a lot of problems uh, uh, in this uh, period and and so we 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 have some suggestions like uh, actually the the we found uh, talk to the people and the guides and all all the people engaged in tourism business and all this thing and they we found that the the people the local people they were saying that the tourist should know about the indigenous communities and the indigenous cultures and there should be a sort of uh, a movie or some sort of guide should be trained to uh, tell them about what is uh, the local people's conservation, their ethics to the forest, their uh, uh, means of uh, uh, protecting the forest. Also, also there should be different class of tourists should be accommodated, not only some particular uh, category of uh, class of people should be allowed. Then it should be it should be for all class of people. Though so the other who are from the uh, uh, poor section of the people, they should also be uh, allowed to uh, enter into the forest with minimum uh, money and uh, facilities over there. So that's also lacking in that area. So that would attract lot lot of other tourists as well due to high cost of all these things. So. And there should be another thing that uh, local foods and local handicraft should be promoted in that area. So this will give additional employment to the to the people who are may, making the local foods, who are collecting the local foods and their, their traditions and the local handicraft. So they, all this should be uh, promoted in the area. And other thing is that uh, it should be made mandatory that the awareness on ecotourism and conversion uh, conservation should be made mandatory for the people over there. So this is all we felt that we should share about the tourism uh, industry and post courier tourism, what is happening to the local people. Thank you for the giving Thank you. Thank you so much about uh, for sharing this information about tourism and in India and uh, we will give now floor for um, a drone Caesar from DRC, and it is a little bit difficult to me to present our speaker because it's writing in French. But as I understand, uh, Mr. John Caesar, master degree in the field Ooh. of peace, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, especially in the option of. Uh, Natural Research, Environment, Peace, and Sustainable Development in Catholic University of Kabul. So, and also you are National Coordinator of very strong organization who are partner of GFC and uh, your organization is accre uh, accredited on the Convention of um, UN Convention on Desertification. So, so please, floor for you. If I did something, you know, not corrected, you can just help me and introduce yourself more here. Thank you, because my French is very poor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure for me to take part in this meeting, which is organized by the global uh, forest coalition this webinar where i presented a lot of uh, uh, speakers that are really specialists in their issue which makes our debate really rich today indeed i can see some words on the timing, so I will have to present 
to others, colleagues present here, I will have to talk about the impact on tourism on forests and communities in the middle of this COVID-19 crisis in DRC and analyze the uh, resilience mechanisms, how they are developed in front of this uh, COVID-19 pandemia, which affected the uh, tourism sector. The uh, common front for the protection of environment and protected spaces in term in as an organization member of the civil society environmental in DRC is a partner of uh, the World uh, Global Forest Coalition, which has uh, always brought to the forefront the issue of forest protection, which is a vital question and central to the development of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo in general and the South Kivu region in particular. Forests are considered to be the home of biodiversity. Uh, it influences tourism, the means of transport that also intervene in the tourist chain and contribute to improving the living conditions of communities dependent, to, dependent on forest or sites that are object uh, of tourism, that are the, the core of tourism. However, the DRC, like other countries that have forest reserves and other sites that are the object of internal and external tourism, uh, uh, whose revenues have certainly contributed to the improvement of the living uh, condition of community at the socio-economic level, has been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused the country to lose a world financial uh, uh, manner from tourism and has even affected several households in forest dependent communities, including the indigenous. Uh, we can uh, mention the pygmy people, the Bantu, and other communities that depend on tourism. We have to remind that in this case, all these countries, these uh, communities that live next to the park could uh, sell their products, their artistic product, they could uh, take advantage from these cultural exchanges to uh, gain some things, but with this crisis, everything uh, vanishes. So the tourism may be uh, internal or external, has a, a, had a positive impact on the level conditions of the po population, for indigenous people and other forest dependent communities who live on the edge of the forest of the National Park Kauzi Biega, on the east of a Democratic Republic of Congo, which is a, a world heritage from the UNESCO, which has always brought a lot of tourists for a, the visit of a sightseeing that are really an object of tourism. With the COVID-19, there is a serious disruption uh, at the level, uh, the economic, social, cultural, touristic, and scientific levels. Some colleagues have presented it before. It was developed and the DRC was impact, uh, impacted negatively by the COVID-19. And this situation had repercussions on fragile households, of local residents who were essentially dependent on activity linked to the conservation of the park. COVID-19 was at the root of the collapse of hope and survival of forest dependent communities as tourism, uh, tourism uh, revenue supported uh, some grassroots development initiative and improvement of conservation related activities. For example, a lot of workers from this national park, Kauzi Biega, and the household lost their mean of survival as they no longer receive regular wages due to the suspension of tourism activity. Women, uh, young women and men were selling agricultural projects, uh, artistic projects, works of art, which was uh, the interest of the tourists, they lost a whole uh, market, juicy market. 
So in order to, in our analysis, with the local people and the people from the, the National Park, we have thought about the mechanisms of resilience because after the COVID-19, the life will continue. And we have to develop the mechanisms of resilience, how to accompany these people, how to promote uh, their work. So, so we have been working with a university and secondary schools for people to, uh, to receive a motion of ecotourism because we have been realizing that ecotourism is one of the keys of promotion uh, of the uh, sustainable development because with ecotourism, you can reach other objectives targeted by the objective of uh, direct development. And this is how we have thought of, uh, uh, around this area on a activities, a agro-pastoral activities to generate some a revenue to the local community because this community has been affected by the consequences of COVID-19. And we have been targeting uh, developments uh, that are around uh, the natural park of Kauzi Biega. So this is in this dimension that I wanted to share with others on the impact of the COVID-19 on tourism and on the forests to see the uh, communities that depend on forests. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now I will leave the word to other, the other panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. It is important to you see how its COVID impacted negatively on the tourism sector and of course for communities who depended from forests. Yeah, and we see how it's, uh, when we started our introduction, Samantha also talked about the negative impacts. So now we leave to other, our last speaker, Rodrigo de Hort. Hello, Rodrigo. Um, Hello. Miss and Rodrigo from Ecuador, political scientist, climate environmentalist, activist for social and ecological transition, and Ecuador and permaculture. Um, Rodrigo also co-founder of the Eco Village on the United Nations Association Youth in Belgium, and now he work in Ecuador for three years. He is currently working as an assessor of Pachamama Foundation program. Yeah, yeah, it's correct. So in Peru, and uh, let uh, I will give you floor and please, Rodrigo, uh, ten minutes, no more than ten minutes, please. Yeah, you have presentation. Thank you. you will share this or just? A... Yes, I will share it. Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. Bonjour, bonjour à tous, bonsoir. Merci. Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, good, uh, good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, great to have an opportunity to share. Uh, those uh, fantastic uh, initiatives uh, around the world uh, that we've been hearing about. I'll talk to you about uh, ecotourism in Amazonia uh, through the Pachamama Foundation, for, which I'm part of. Ecotourism in Amazonia is considered like a sustainable alternative that need to be uh, developed. So let's first give you some uh, insights about the Pachamama Foundation it was created in uh, 97, active in the Amazonie. There's about uh, thir 15 people working there. Uh, its main mission is to protect the territories in Amazonie with indigenous population in order to support uh, a self-determination process and uh, face, uh, the, uh, face the threat of the expansion of extractive industries uh, on a large scale and, uh, extens and extensive uh, agriculture, which has uh, the main threats in Amazonie. The programs of the foundations are divided uh, in six main programs. Third, we work on uh, sacred basin. Uh, it's, it, we're talking about uh, protecting uh, 30 million of hectares of forest uh, between Peru and and the old Amazonie, uh, so there's NGOs and indigenous communities uh, organized there. We also help uh, indigenous communities to uh, reinforce uh, their uh, capacity, their organizational 
capacity so that they can defend their right. So we work on really local programs like bioeconomy and sustainable economical solution. We also have a, a mother and child health program, uh, human rights defense and uh, nature defense, and then uh, the, the ecotourism program, the one we're going to talk about. So the first example uh, I want to talk about, I'm going to give you two examples today. The first example is an example of uh, ecotourism, I would say a high quality, uh, let's say a luxurious uh, ecotourism in the actual territory. So I'll, I'll, I'll put you a small video so you can get into that context, you can emerge. I hope you can all sit and, and listen to it. Uh, there's no... Donc voilà un cours aperçu, une belle introduction. So that, that was a really uh, short insight, uh, so you can have a com some kind of introduction. I'm going back to my presentation. Um, so Kappa Village, uh, it's been uh, created in uh, 96 and it's considered uh, like a pioneer in the, in the Pastasan region of uh, Equatorian Amazonie. There was an investment of more than $2 million until 2007 and the private uh, society that uh, imposed the project at the beginning, it was, a, it was a transferred to the actual community who became uh, the, the owner and now they, uh, they have 100% of the management of the ecolodge. So three communities are the owners, but there's 12 communities uh, that uh, are are receiving uh, benefits from it. We're talking about uh, 12,000 uh, visitors since it was uh, created. It has a really positive impact in terms of uh, local employment, protection of uh, cultural values, biodiversity, and ancestral knowledge have been protected uh, from the actual community. In 2018, 2019, uh, it was uh, reconstructed. And uh, nowadays, uh, there's a full capacity of 30 uh, visitors. It's clearly a, a space that work on local entrepreneurship of tourism. Uh, it's principally 95% uh, of tourism is uh, foreign tourism, usually Europeans and uh, US citizens. And it allows uh, to have a local uh, employment uh, through services, uh, restaurants and um, guidance uh, and other touristic uh, linked activities. Unfortunately, this and the, the, the crisis of COVID-19 has been uh, pretty violent. Uh, I mean, we're talking about seven months. Uh, the, the site is closed, uh, it's been closed for the past seven months. But thanks to donations and some supports, uh, the, it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna be able to reopen in December and uh, there's uh, already some reservations. I'm a, the coordinator of that second example I'm gonna present you, uh, it's pretty different. Uh, of, it's pretty different of the Ecolodge. It's the Naku project. Um, it's a, I'm going to show you the video too because it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to introduce you. So then I'll give you my conclusion about it.
Donc voilà le. So this was a, the second and last example I wanted to share. This is another style. Uh, from it's different from Ketavi. It's another territory. It's another culture. It's another nationality. It's the Sapara culture that's been recognized in 2001 by UNESCO, uh, like a world heritage uh, language. Uh, unfortunately, it's an endangered uh, language. Unfortunately, we're talking about a territory that it's in the middle of the. Of the the Amazonian forest, uh, there's a just, uh, you can just access it by, uh, by air, by plane. It's, uh, it's, it's another experience uh, that it's more linked with uh, local knowledge, uh, with a, let's say it's, a, it's, an, it's an infrastructure that it's a lighter, easier to manage. Uh, there's a, an accompaniment to the visitors to go through a transformation uh, in that trip in the in the in the herd of Amazonie, so it's a response and a resistance uh, to the invasion of uh, oil companies that try to get in uh, every year to extract uh, resources. This is an economical uh, response, uh, and this is a uh, and it helps. Uh, the school in the university, it creates local employment in terms of guidance, people who are cooking, the, uh, the, the, the medicinal uh, part of the, of the activities. Obviously, the COVID-19 has been uh, pretty hard, uh, thanks to the help of some professionals and, uh, and the community work. What they did in Naku is that they they created an online course uh, so that so that you can keep uh, to they can keep that relationship with the international community about uh, local medicine and have a new ex type of exchange that are online and that helped to maintain uh, the basic uh, the, ba the the basic costs. We we hope we can reopen uh, this the. Um, the site in December, we already have uh, some reservations. So this is part of the, of the protection, of the ongoing protection process of the Amazon culture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing us beautiful examples and very wonderful video. So, and uh, yeah, it's uh, very important to have online courses. Uh, which can be now more various and very well accessible and for people who uh, like to learn more about that and especially in COVID time a lot of things is moving from the online and education is important to us that so thank you so much dear um, participants and colleagues and wonderful speakers I appreciate for you wonderful presentations and now we are leave to questions and answer sessions. And please, um, who like to give questions for our speakers, you can use your microphone and video, present yourself and give your floor for you. Or you can use chat. Yeah, okay, Simona, please. Hi, right, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we hear you beautiful, okay. it's a nice. Happy to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. These were really very, very interesting. Excited, excited, incredible. Yeah. To see indeed the different examples. Um, and yeah, I hope you can hear me well because I must say we are suffering from an exceptional heat here in springtime in Asuncion, Paraguay. Also an exceptional drought. As you may know, we have had a lot of forest fires. I've just visited some of the area the past days and i'm mentioning this because i think there's one dimension we haven't addressed a lot and i wonder to i would really like the, the reactions of the different speakers on that that is the dimension of climate change and especially of course international aviation which is probably the most rapidly cause of uh emissions uh until the COVID crisis it was um, and it's, it's a big dilemma, of course, because I can imagine that a lot of also the positive examples that have been shown are pretty hard to sustain uh, without international tourists. 
and I think especially the last one, I've, I've been in contact with some of the supper. I think it's a very inspiring example. But I was also fascinated when I read the response to the survey of Pachamama, in which they pointed out that in general, of course, uh, any international connection with the village is unsinkable without aviation because they're very remote into the jungle and not uh, reachable over land. And communities are actually very uh, afraid of uh, a road being built, overland transport, because it would mean that the whole forest becomes much more accessible for extractive industries as well. I just wanted in general to, uh, the last speaker, but more in general, ask people how they see this dilemma of the climate impact of aviation and whether they see strategies to disconnect this from tourism. Uh, if there are discussions about that with the communities that currently depend on tourism, if they are aware of the impact of aviation, of course, this is, you know, it's basically like you add a coal mine to a tourism project, but the problem is aviation, it looks a lot more clean. Um, so just to ask, especially the last speaker, but also the other speakers, whether there have been any discussions in their communities about you know, the impact of, of aviation on climate change and how this could be disconnected from tourism. Yeah. Yeah. So so are I, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm ready. I, I can respond in English. Thank you, Simone, for, for, for your, your point of view, yes. Um, as I respond in the survey, yes, it's complicated to talk about this, this topic in the, in the communities because it's, it's the only way and it's a, it's a kind of, the, of a way of transport that protects the, the Amazon and, the, and the, the biodiversity for all the, the problems that can bring the uh, roads, construction and all the urbanization. Um, but more general, um, to respond to, to, because these communities and these tourism activities depends on um, foreign uh, and, and um, um, tourism, so more from, from the United States and Europe, so the, the main um, objective now is to attract the European tourists, how we can um, culturally uh, promote um, the, the, um, the richness and the biodiversity and the nature and the wildness of the Amazon uh, for people living in Quito who are more attracted to, to have a trip in Miami or to have a trip in Barcelona. It's, it's how to, to educate the people about the all the richness and, and all the biodiversity and the, and, the, and the wonderful places they have in the country. Uh, this is for me the, 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 the large, uh, I mean, the long-term issue to, to, promote, uh, to promote as well the, um, the, the, the local tourism. Uh, and and it's, it's a lot of, of, of uh, it's difficult because it's, it's, it's really expensive to, to travel in, 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 Ecuador, in the Amazon. So for me, this is the, the, the main response. And from Europe, I think it's a, um, it's a reflection that's going on about uh, to use the, 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 the travel and, and not only going in Ecuador for, for one week or two weeks, but maybe for, for one month, two months, three months, uh, and to discover more place and have a more transformation uh, process and journey. Uh, this is my response in my point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. Uh, uh, you uh, <coughs> very yeah, briefly, I think deal, deal with us already. Okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Simona, for your very uh, interesting questions and queries about the uh, impact of climate change in tourism and, and the impact of uh, aviation, uh, particularly in the uh, um, tourism, ecotourism sector. Actually, the people are really very less aware about the impact of aviation, but Generally, they, they are quite aware about the impact of uh, climate change. For example, in the context of Nepal, uh, there is uh, direct impact in the mountain from the climate change. There is direct impact in the water resources or biodiversity or habitat of the uh, wildlife. Therefore, people are quite aware about the impact of climate change. Uh, but generally, actually, there are no any discussion about the impact of aviation sector uh, in, in, in the environment or in the biodiversity. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, in the context of our country, uh, there are lots of uh, flight arrangements from different countries to Nepal. 
for the international tourist uh, because uh, there is huge pressure for the mountaineering uh, in Nepal. Uh, therefore, definitely there may be huge impact of the aviation in the in the in the environment, uh, mountain, and in other different natural resources. Uh, but uh, there are very less discussion about this issue at ground level. Uh, this is the situation. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, we have to consider about this issue definitely in the future. And, and we have to start discussion about how we can reduce the impact of aviation, particularly in the environment and, and our uh, natural resources and, and the community, uh, livelihood of the community. Uh, this is my general understanding and, and opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, more question you have? Yeah, John. John. John, it was your question. Uh, it's in the tongue, so I don't understand. But you're right. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Can you just? Yeah. John. I find that. In the context of Gongo, you call it. And it's just your comments, or you also like raise some questions? Lena, там с французского. Yeah, in the French. On the chat. John Ralph, Genre, John Ralph, something. John Caesar. Я думаю, что это комментарий. Ah, okay, maybe it's comment. Okay. Uh, I don't see what somebody raise hand or ask questions and um, let me give her with no more questions to Andre. Andre, please. Thank you, Kaisha. Hello. Uh, I am very glad uh, that uh, we had a very interesting webinar uh, today. Uh, we are involved. Uh, and uh, oh, it is our first uh, webinar on tourism. Uh, Global Forest Coalition will continue uh, uh, work on this important issue. And uh, uh, all our uh, webinar will be rec uh, recorded uh, in four different languages, in English, French, uh, Spanish, and Russian. And uh, if you want, uh, you can get uh, recordings of this uh, webinar in future. Um, I uh, would like to thank uh, our moderator, Kaisha, uh, and also all uh, panelists uh, for interesting presentations. And I hope uh, that it is not our last uh, webinar on tourism, and uh, I hope that uh, we shall uh, meet uh, later. Uh, please uh, follow uh, Global Forest Coalition website. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much, uh, Andre. And I would like to just uh, ask all participants just uh, then, uh, you know, your camera and we can see each other and say bye each other. Uh, it's possible, just, uh, yeah, please, we can see each other and just wait. It was wonderful for all participants and uh, we can make picture for future, just for our, you know, memory today. Andre, somebody will do picture or I will do that. Uh, if can you, you can do, please. Uh, yeah. yeah, please, please, Oli, Carmen, Janet, Carmen, Shopana, John. We, we like to see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for all. I will make picture. Ludmila. Ludmila. Can you can you do uh, hello? Yeah, can you can you the uh, camera? No, no, okay. No, I have no today. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anatoly, we can see you. Anatoly yeah. Kim. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Smile, bye. bye. Simona, smile, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, I will the next one. Yeah. Bigger one. Yeah, good. <laughs> and you know, uh, which I ask now, also, we need your feedback. 
or you recommendation for future or just uh, how you feel at the end of the webinar you can write a few words in the chat and then uh, there's one minute or 30 minutes six seconds for that just uh, type in your chat and then one two three and you can press enter just uh, please share your emotion your feeling your thank you for anything and we will use for that chat please for all of us So, for everyone, right? Yeah, thank you. One, two, three, press. <laughs> okay. So, wait for all. Take care. Be safety. Be healthy. See you in next our webinar. Simona, thank you for all participants. Andre, thank you very much for organizing and Kimanda for all of the speakers and our translators. Thank you, Kaisha. Thank you bye. all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.